From making your own Starbucks inspired drinks to making gorgeous fall wreaths, fall is one of the best times to do cozy DIYs and crafts. Today I'm gonna to share with you my absolute favorite DIYs for the season. Let's get started. Let's start by grabbing the Inga Britta blanket from Ikea. I love this blanket because it's affordable, it's soft knit, and it's an amazing base for some cozy DIYs. Next, I'm creating some giant pom-poms with this pom-pom maker, which I love, and I'll link in the description box below. I'm using a chunky off-white yarn that closely matches the color of the blanket. After I've made four pom-poms, I'm attaching one to each corner of this blanket using a crochet hook, some extra yarn, and some simple square knots. I'm weaving any loose ends through and this blanket is all done. I love the cozy texture and it's a simple and affordable DIY for the fall season. I'm starting with this inexpensive flannel scarf from Dollarama and finding a cushion insert that's about the same width. Next, I'm cutting the scarf into two pieces for the front and back of this pillow. I'm making the pieces exactly the same height and width as the pillow insert because the final cover is gonna be slightly smaller than the pillow insert for that fluffy look. If your scarf has fringed ends like mine, don't include the fringes in the measurements. Make sure there's a fringed end on the opposite sides of each piece. Now I'm laying the two pieces right sides together and pinning them in place. I'm folding the fringe to the inside of the pillow cover and then sewing around the perimeter of the pinned pieces using my sewing machine and a half inch seam allowance. If you prefer, you can also use fabric glue for this instead. Leave a hole that's about six inches long at the bottom center of the pillowcase, and then I'm turning the pillow cover right side out, inserting my insert, and then stitching the hole shut by hand. Now I have this soft and cozy pillow for my sofa that adds some comfort and pattern into my space for the season. To make a beautiful fall lantern, I'm cutting some scrap two by two pieces of lumber into 11 by seven and a half long pieces, two 10 and a half long pieces, and then four 21 inch long pieces with my miter saw. Then I'm staining my pieces with this gray brown stain, then placing seven of the seven and a half inch wood pieces in a row and sandwiching them between the two 10 and a quarter inch pieces. I'll leave a link to the written tutorial for this one down in that description box below. I'm using a finishing nail gun to nail the pieces together. Next, I'm putting the base on its side and positioning one of the 21 inch wood pieces to one of the corners of the base. I'm then nailing the two pieces together with a nail gun through the bottom of the base into the end of the tall wood piece. I'm repeating the step for all the four long pieces. Then I'm putting some wood glue on the ends of the remaining seven and a half inch long wood pieces and placing them between the top ends of the vertical 21 inch long pieces. I'm securing them together with the nail gun and adding glue to these pieces so they won't spin. Finally, I'm creating a handle by cutting the end of a wire clothes hanger off with wire cutters, bending it into a lantern handle shape and wrapping each end around the top sides of the lantern. I'm using pliers to twist the ends together to secure the handle. Now I have a cute wooden lantern using wood scraps that's so fun to decorate seasonally on my porch and this would also make a gorgeous table centerpiece. Making your own Starbucks inspired drinks for the season is a great way to save some money and also make a healthier version of the popular coffee drinks. Here's how I make two of my favorite fall drinks inspired by Starbucks. The first one is the pumpkin cream cold brew. I figured out a really easy way to make this. First, you use the three, two, one method. So in a glass, place three tablespoons of heavy cream, 
two of milk and one of maple syrup. You can also use vanilla syrup. I just like using maple syrup. You're going to place one tablespoon of pure pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling, just the plain puree. Make it at home or buy it canned. Then add about half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice mix. You can buy it pre-mixed or you can also make yours at home. I'll leave my recipe down in that description box below. Then you're gonna whip this up with a handheld frother. Find an inexpensive one from Amazon. I'll also link this in the description box below. Whip it until it's nice and foamy for about a minute. And then you're going to take a tall glass, place some ice in it, place your cold brew inside. I make cold brew myself. You could just buy some too if you want. And then you're gonna pour this pumpkin cream on top, put a straw in there, mix it together, and oh my gosh, this is so delicious. Definitely a must make, and I have the principal recipe linked down in the description box below if you wanna save this for later. If you like hot drinks instead, definitely try my DIY pumpkin spice latte. You make your own syrup that is pumpkin inspired that you can use over and over again, and this is really easy. In a saucepan on your stove on medium, place half a cup of brown sugar, three quarters cup of water, a third cup of pure pumpkin puree, and then a tablespoon of pumpkin spice mix, DIY or pre-mixed. Bring that to a rolling boil and let it simmer for around two minutes. And then you're gonna strain that into another bowl. You just kinda wanna get those chunks out. You're gonna use the liquid that is strained out. Place that in a jar. It's gonna thicken up a bit and then you can use this over and over again. So you put two shots of espresso into a mug. Stir in one to two tablespoons to taste of your DIY pumpkin spice syrup and then top that all off with some hot steamed milk. And this is so yummy. Save that syrup in the fridge for up to a week to use throughout the week and I hope you love this one as much as I do. Let's make some beautiful textured landscape art for your mantle. To begin, find some of your old wooden framed sign art like the one I have above. If you don't have old sign art, you can upcycle similar large DIY wall art using a thrift store frame or start with a wooden framed canvas from the dollar store. Next, find your favorite vintage landscape art file on Etsy. There's tons of shops that offer inexpensive downloads for gorgeous antique and vintage landscapes. I'll link my favorites down in that description box. Have your file printed at your local print shop or copy shop. I always use staples as a full color poster that's the same width and height as the inside of your signs frame. If you can't make it exactly the same size, make it slightly larger and then you can trim it to fit. Then apply some matte Mod Podge to the old sign inside the frame. Use a generous amount and spread it all over your art with a foam brush. You may want to put your art on a large drop cloth before applying the Mod Podge because it can get messy. Now it's time to add the printed vintage art to the frame. Smooth the art onto the Mod Podge. Use your hands or a brayer to smooth it so that there are no wrinkles or ripples. Finally, use more Mod Podge and a foam brush to seal your DIY wall art. You can even add some texture to the art to make it look like a painting by using a stiff brush and making some crisscross textured strokes and stippling effects in that Mod Podge. Let your art dry, hang it up on your wall or display it on your fireplace mantle in your living room and enjoy your beautiful vintage art. To make a beautiful decorative blanket ladder, I cut four pieces of three quarter inch wood dowel to 14 inches long with a handsaw and left two dowels at 14 inches long. I'm making a mark nine inches from the bottom of one of the 48 inch dowel pieces, then I'm marking two and a half inches from that mark. I'm repeating this until I have marks for four three quarter inch copper pipe tees and doing the same on the second 48 inch dowel piece. Now I'm mixing some epoxy following the manufacturer's directions and applying it within the marks for the copper tees. Next I'm inserting the end of the wooden dowel into a copper tee fitting and sliding it between the marks. I'm repeating this for the rest of the copper tees and then applying epoxy to the inside of the horizontal part of the fittings. Then I'm sliding the 14 inch horizontal dowel pieces inside to create those ladder rungs. As a finishing touch, I'm applying epoxy to the inside of some copper pipe end caps and sliding those into the ends of the 48 inch dowel rods. Now I'm gently pushing everything in place and laying it flat. You can wipe away any excess glue with an old rag. You're gonna wanna let the epoxy cure for at least 24 hours before using the ladder for blankets. 
I absolutely love how this turned out and it's lasted me for years. This decorative ladder is a beautiful spot for displaying cozy blankets and quilts and the combination of the copper and the wood is so pretty. To make a romantic fall wreath, start with an 18 inch grapevine wreath base. I love grapevine wreath forms because they hold all of the faux floral so well and can be used over and over again. Curve two faux pompous stems to match the shape of the wreath base, insert them into the middle left of the base and tack them down with hot glue if you want. Next, attach some larger flowers to the center left of the wreath where the pompous stems meet. I stick the stem of my florals deep into the wreath and only use a small amount of hot glue. Now layer in some smaller florals and faux pumpkins, tacking as needed with your hot glue gun. The goal is to have the majority of your elements on the center left section of the wreath and taper them out from there. Finish the wreath off by inserting and gluing down some faux olive branches at the top and bottom of the floral area and finish by adding some faux fall leaves. You can fill any bare spots in the wreath as needed with more smaller florals and greenery. To make an adorable seasonal doormat with your Cricut cutting machine, access the design space project file that I have linked in the description box below and cut it onto stencil vinyl with your Cricut. Weed out the letters from the vinyl sheets. Now trim the inner edges of the vinyl sheets with scissors so that the letters match when the sheets are placed together. Then apply transfer tape to the sheets and remove the backing from the vinyl. Center the design on top of the doormat, press the vinyl down and gently remove the transfer tape. I'm just using an inexpensive Dollarama doormat. Next, apply black paint in a dabbing motion to the stencil with a stencil brush. You're gonna need two to three coats of paint to make sure that the letters are nice and visible. And then once the paint is dry, remove the vinyl stencil. Finish your mat with a protective coat of very thin polyurethane spray to keep your design looking fresh and lasting. This mat looks so pretty layered over a larger rug on your porch to celebrate the fall season. Don't forget to add some pumpkins and mums. This simple DIY centerpiece takes 15 minutes or less to put together and I think it looks so gorgeous as a fall table feature. To begin, line a narrow wooden dough bowl with floral foam. You can cut the foam to size and then cover that foam with some moss. This one's just from the dollar store. Insert some toothpicks or small wooden dowels into the bottom of a small faux pumpkin. These are also from the dollar store and insert that into the foam. Continue inserting pumpkins randomly all over the dough bowl and then you can insert some faux fall leaf stems into the foam. You can cut the stems into smaller sections to spread the leaves throughout the centerpiece and also save some money. Finally, place more moss and pine cones in any bare spots in that centerpiece and you can use a different variety of moss for more interest. I placed my dough bowl centerpiece in our breakfast nook table and added some other simple fall themed elements in soft whites and greens and I love how this calm and beautiful fall table turned out. When I saw this wooden artist panel at Dollarama, I knew flipping it upside down would make the perfect base for a DIY wooden tray for fall. I'm staining it with some leftover wood stain all over and then letting that dry. Next, I'm adding some peel and stick tiles to its base inside and these are also from Dollarama. I'm 
I'm cutting up a leather belt from the thrift store to make handles and I'm using some screws and my drill to attach the suede handles to each side of the tray just like this. So easy and so cute. I'm styling the tray beside my espresso machine on my dining room sideboard, adding some other budget-friendly elements like mugs and pumpkins from the dollar store, and this sweet and easy fall coffee station and tray is complete. You can use this tray for other things around the house and it's so budget-friendly to make from thrift store and dollar store supplies. To make your home smell absolutely incredible and cozy for the season, try making a simmer pot from food scraps. In a shallow saucepan on your stove, mix together two cups of water, some peels from one orange, peels from one apple, two cinnamon sticks, a teaspoon of whole cloves, and a teaspoon of vanilla or a vanilla extract. Now bring the pot to a low simmer and leave it on your stove to fill the house with a beautiful autumn scent. I find this works in about 10 minutes and then I can just turn my stove right off. This is one of my absolute favorite stovetop potpourri recipes. You can even bottle up the mixture and pop it in your fridge to simmer again later. Your house is going to smell absolutely cozy and incredible. This is one of my favorite cozy DIYs for fall and it's easier than it looks to make. For this chunky knit blanket, I'm using six skeins of Yarnspirations Burnett Blanket Big Yarn from Michaels, but I'll leave some alternatives down in that description box below. Holding the yarn, make a loop about eight inches from the end. Take the loop and place it over your four fingers, then loop the yarn over your fingers again, pulling it through the first loop you made. Now you've created a loose slip knot. Continue doing this until you have a long chain of loops and these are going to form the foundation of your blanket. I made a chain of 24 stitches with this yarn for my 4 foot wide blanket. Once you have your loops, it's time to start working your blanket. Flip your chain so that its tail is on the left hand side. Take the final loop you made and pull some more of the working yarn through it, creating a new loop. This is the first stitch of your next row. If you'd like, place three fingers through the loop and tighten the working yarn gently around your fingers. You can do this with each loop so that they're a consistent size. Then put your fingers through the next chain over on the row below and pull another loop of the working yarn through that. Repeat this process until you finish creating new loops for the next row across the entire chain. For this blanket, that's 24 loops. Once you're finished your first row, repeat this process going the opposite direction to create your second row. Continue in this manner, going back and forth, creating new loops until you only have about three to six inches of yarn left on your skein. When your first skein of yarn is almost done with about three to six inches left, attach some new yarn from a new skein by tying the end of the new yarn to the previous one with a simple square knot. Continue knitting back and forth until you either wanna add more of the same color of yarn or start a new row in a new color. Once you've reached the desired length, it's time to finish your blanket. You're gonna finish your row and make sure you have enough yarn left on your skein to cast off your blanket. The length of yarn will need to be about twice the width of your blanket. Start the final cast off row by creating two loops into the previous row as per usual, then pull the first loop over the second one, holding onto the second loop. Make sure that these loops are on the larger side so you don't have a gathered or tight finish to your blanket. I use all my four fingers to measure inside each loop to make sure they're big enough. Continue this final row in the same manner, creating another loop, pulling the previous one over it, and making sure each loop is generously sized for that nice relaxed edge. Once you're done the final stitch, cut the yarn leaving a long tail and then pull the end through the last loop to secure it. Finally, weave in the loose ends to make sure your blanket looks neat and tidy. Make sure that you're tying any yarn ends together first as needed. And now you have a thick and cozy blanket that you can use in your own home this fall or give it as an amazing and a fabulous gift.
If you want to turn a plain round cutting board into cute fall decor with your Cricut cutting machine, open up Cricut Design Space and create a new project. Click on the images menu and find your favorite fall text image to use for your cutting board and insert it into your project. The image I'm using here is called Pumpkin Spice Everything Text and I'll link it in the description box below. Resize the image so that it fits on your board with about an inch of room all the way around. Place some removable white vinyl onto your Cricut mat and then send your design to your Cricut machine. Once your design is cut onto your vinyl, weed away any of the excess, place some transfer tape on top of your design and smooth it down. Now flip the design over and carefully remove the vinyl backing. Center the design on your cutting board and smooth it down. I chose to have mine slightly higher on my board so that it wasn't on the marble portion. Finally, carefully remove that transfer tape and your simple DIY fall cutting board is complete. I styled mine on my kitchen counter and I love how it turned out. To make a stunning fall centerpiece, start with a real or faux pumpkin. Mine is real from my local pumpkin farm. Apply some hot glue to the top of your pumpkin around the stem area and then press a layer of moss firmly onto the hot glue, spreading it out over the top of that pumpkin. Repeat these steps until you've covered about the top quarter of the pumpkin and make the edge of the moss kind of irregular so that it looks more natural. Next, arrange some faux succulents within the mossy area and make sure that they all fit within that moss portion. If your succulents have long stems, you can use some scissors to trim the stems so that it sits nicely on top of the pumpkin. To give your centerpiece a more natural look, use a variety of sizes and textures. And also I find that using an odd number of succulents always looks best. This makes a beautiful centerpiece for your fall or your Thanksgiving table, and it's also a fun craft you can try with the whole family. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed these autumn DIYs. Let me know down in those comments below which of these was your favorite. I would love to know. I love using Dollar Tree items to make fall DIYs because it is nice and budget friendly. So I have 10 incredible Dollar Tree DIYs for fall that you'll want to do next. I'm going to leave the video for you to watch next right up here.